Welcome back to the show where we run you through all the Dolphins news you need to know about. After you through the news you need to know about, we run you through the fan community where we answer fans' questions. <sighs> Rough night to be a Dolphins fan for many different reasons, not only the loss, but obviously the Tua situation was really rough to watch. Um, uh, and then obviously with the national media and their reaction to it has been pretty crazy as well. So there's a lot to talk about in today's show. Um, uh, so let's get into it. We'll start with the Tua stuff. So here's the hard news that everybody needs to know. And I think everybody does know this because I'm sure everybody had their finger on the pulse, especially if you're listening to the show, what's going on with Tua. He did fly back with the team. Uh, he did have a neck brace on, and this is according to multiple reports from like TMZ Sports to the, the Dolphins official Twitter. Um, Pro Football Rumors reported it as well. Um, so that's good. It's good that he was talking. There was a moment there, and especially if you were paying t- t- attention to social media, that it was getting a little weird with some of the stuff that was being said. So, and it was, cr- and even like as the broadcast is going on, where they were like, you know, talking about the head trauma and how serious this could be. Uh, and obviously the visual wasn't great either. So I'm sure a lot of us were, like me, were very, not only upset, but scared for him. Um, and uh, it's just really, it's a blessing that he is home and he got to fly with the team. Uh, and even when they reported that he was talking was like a huge relief. So it's just, thank God that he's okay. Um, it was pretty brutal to see that, obviously, and um, obviously our prayers are with Tua, uh, I'm sure all Dolphins fans feel the same way, so thank God he's he's okay, um, but moving on from that, and if we look at the, the way the media has handled this, um, I think is really weird, now, I, I know it's a reaction to a terrible thing, and which is obviously um, reasonable. But I feel like the media has taken this way too far. Like on the Dan Levitard show today, I think there was a doctor on there, and he is quoted as saying that if he comes back, he could die. There are multiple people ripping Mike McDaniel for his post-game press conference, which I thought was pretty, pretty good. I don't understand why so many people think Now, I'm in the camp that the Dolphins did the right thing. And not just because I'm a Dolphins fan, but just because I do believe the NFL concussion protocol. I mean, there were people in the national media saying, well, there should should be an independent neurologist. There is an independent neurologist. That has nothing to do with the team. That that literally exists. So, I, I think if he did have a concussion, that he would have missed that game. I do not think that Mike McDaniel and the Dolphins organization would have kept him... Um, f- from missing a game if he had a concussion. They would have left him out. Um, I just, I don't really understand that. I mean, the man doesn't even practice. Ter- Terran Armstead hasn't had a practice since he's been a Dolphin, it seems like, during the season. And even in the off season. Shout out to Terran Armstead, he's had a great year. But the man doesn't practice. Jalen Waddle, this entire season, has been on a snap count because of his, um, I, I, I don't know what his, if it's his hamstring, it's his calf, but clearly he's dealing with issues too. And he hasn't even played all the snaps, and barely, I mean, he was on a severe snap count in Thursday night's game. Xavier Howard got pulled from the game, and it was a close game. Uh, due to the groin thing. So I don't think this team is running... Their t- they're, they're, I think they're being overly cautious with some of their players. Taron Ter- said is a great example of that. Who doesn't even practice. So uh, to say that they would ignore a serious injury, like a concussion, just to have Tua play in a Thursday night game, I just don't believe it. Um, I, I, I don't believe that. I don't... I, believe Mike McDaniel when he says what he said. He's And he's been pretty upfront and, and very cautious with, even when he first got here, dealing with some of the injuries and his injury plan with some of the players. Um, so I just feel like the, the, the media is taking this away. And there is no evidence that the Dolphins didn't 
go through protocol so far, which is the most annoying part. It's literally just speculation and people playing doctor. Literally playing doctor on national media, in the national media right now. Um, and, yeah, it's just really annoying to hear that. Um, and I had to say, it just, it's just been bothering me ever since it, it, it happened. And even since Sunday's game against Buffalo, uh, it's been annoying. So, did Tua hide his concussion? I highly doubt that. Um, maybe he did. You know, Drew Brees talked about that on the Dan Patrick show where he did it all the time. So maybe Tua did hide his concussion. Um, maybe it was a very light one, if that's a, even a thing. And he could kind of cheat the protocol that way. Um, but being examined by people who are independent from the team and saying that you don't have a concussion, I trust the doctors, and I trust the Dolphins went through the right protocol. Why he got up and his, he couldn't stand... St- people talk about the head bobble thing. It was more so he could not stand up. Even if you look at the replay against the Buffalo Bills. Um, now, I'm not a doctor. I don't know what the heck happens. I don't know what would even cause you to... Um, if Can your back do that? I don't know. I don't know, guys. I couldn't even tell you. I'm not even going to pretend to tell you what I think on that. I don't know. All I know is is that the four years being an NFL fan and a Miami Dolphins diehard fan, um, that the concussion thing, and especially if you followed it sports, and all the things the NFL has done... Uh, to keep players safe with the helmet modifications and an independent uh, doctor. I, I just It would be very difficult for anybody to get a player, especially... We're talking about to get the, the head coach and the trainers and the doctors are all complicit in this and got him through the concussion protocol without saying he had a concussion and them knowing that he did have a concussion. And playing him, and that's obviously extremely unsafe. I just don't believe that. Could Tua cheat the system? That's a whole other conversation. But to say that there was foul play involved in it, to me, is going a little bit too far. I just don't believe that. Uh, that's just my opinion on it. I know that everybody else has a very different opinion on that. With no evidence, by the way. Um, and, seem, and everybody seems to be repeating the same information, which just tells me that nobody really knows what the heck they're talking about and obviously the NFLPA has came out and said that they're gonna do everything in the legal their legal power to investigate this um and uh I'm sure that they'll find nothing so it it is what it is um uh, it's just a very unfortunate night for the fan base and the organization and it's it's it sucked. It it really did suck. Um and yeah. In other news, um I would say and and to to end off on the two thing cuz I forgot to bring this up. Uh and the NFLPA will be investigating. I'm sure they'll I, I honest to god don't think uh They'll, they'll find anything. I don't expect Tua to be back for a long time. Not only because of the injury, but because of the national... The way... I, I think that's going to affect him, him coming back is um, the, 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 the perception of everybody else I think is definitely going to affect it. Um, so we can have... He's probably going to be gone for a month of the game time. Like four... You know, Teddy Bridgewater missed three games when he had his concussion. But that was towards the end of the season, this is a little bit of a different situation, this is early in the season, um, if he, I, I could see him miss the entire, the rest of the season, um, I could see that happening, you know, Luke Keekley is another great example, um, you know, he missed four weeks with his concussion, so I would say the standard would be four weeks for Tua to be out, um, and I could see that being extended a little bit because of the, the national perception. Um, so we have two examples of Tua and Teddy when the, where they suffer concussions, multiple concussions, in a short amount of time, in, in Luke Keekley's case. So uh, he missed four weeks. Teddy obviously missed the rest of the season, but that was uh, towards the end of the year. 
So I could see Tua missing a good chunk of time, unfortunately. Um, he was playing great football. You know, I know he had the, the interception in that game, but honest to God, he is a different player. Um, he's seeing the field. He's reading the field at a way higher level than he ever had before. Um, I think one thing when Tua does come back and play, one conversation, that, and this is something in the Patriots game, he has to get rid of the ball. Um, he's so good at locking down feel. Like, he never drops his eyes. It literally is all just feel. Um, and it gets him in trouble a lot of the time um, with him taking unnecessary hits. And he's too small of a person to do that. Um, and that's something that they're going to have to sit him down and, like, coach him on. Because it's just, he's taken too many unnecessary hits throughout, even the, this year, and in, and in years past, from holding on to the ball a little bit too long. I think that's something that he's going to have to work on. Um, so yeah, uh, that's it for, for um, really the news. Uh, uh, I, I guess we'll, we'll read this NFL PA executive director... Um, a quote, I guess he, this is, he said to Mike Florio, uh, this is the NFLPA, he said, he said, quote, we insisted on these rules to avoid ex exactly this scenario. We will pursue every legal option, including making referrals against the doctors, uh, against the doctors to licensing agencies in the team that is obligated to keep our players safe. And that is, yeah, so... I, again, nothing has come out yet that they've there is any foul play, um, so we'll see what what if their investigation finds anything, which I doubt it will. So, um, let's get into this game now. Obviously, this bye week is going to hit hard for this for this this team because they need it. This team is very injured. Um, you could tell during the game and shout out to the interior of this defense for fighting as hard as they could um but i could tell defensively it, it just didn't have the same pop that they did last week um and you could tell that they were tired um which is expected i mean they played 90 snaps the, the week before but you know, Byron Jones needs to come back. Xavier Howard needs to get healthy. So hopefully that they can get those two back on the field. And another news, I forgot to bring this up. This was reported um, uh, from Pro Football Rumors. He, Xavier Howard is expected to play against the Jets next week, this upcoming week. Um, well, I guess it would be next week. So that's good news. Um, but they need those two back. Um, that's one of the things in this game that really popped. I mean, Cater Kohu did his best. Uh, and, but the two, the, missing X in the fourth quarter of that game, it just, it was just too much to overcome. Especially the way Josh calls defenses and how aggressive it is. It's just, it's just not going to work if those two aren't on the field. They're going to have to completely change what they do defensively. Uh, if they, if they, um, if those two can't come back healthy. So th that needs to change. And so to get into this game, the Dolphins followed the Bengals 15 to 27. One of the things that I've noticed throughout the season, and this is one criticism of this game as well, and this is something that some you know Richard, like people like Richard Sherman and and some other people have brought up that I, that I brought up last week. It th some of the blitzes, it's just too much um, a, a lot of the time, and teams have shown. Uh, that they have game plan for it and can pick it up. Um, and I feel like Josh gets a little too samey with some of his defensive play calls. And then another big criticism is he needs a variety of coverages off of that um, or, or just different coverages to play. Because, and this is something that I've always said about him in this defense their zone coverages aren't complex or detailed whatsoever. They're very basic, especially when we're in single high safety. Um, we've had a lot of busted coverages when we've went single high safety, like basic cover three, people just not getting to their spot quick enough or just letting someone run free through the middle of the field. That was a huge problem against the Baltimore Ravens. Um, that's something that needs to change. 
we need to have more variety of coverages. Two high, more two high looks would be great, especially on third down. I mean, the, 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 there was like so many. Like you, the, the Xavier Howard one's a perfect example. On a third and long, you you know you have a mismatch up front against that Bengals defensive line. I mean, they could not run the football all day. Just drop back in two two high safety look. I don't care if you run cover two, cover four, two man under. I honestly could care less. And just let your front rush. And they could have still done the whole press thing, which was working all night. That's something, obviously, they saw on film. Uh, and be physical with their receivers. And still do that. And just play a little bit safer. Help out the defensive backs. Uh, and when you do do that, be a little bit more complex. Be a little bit more varied in that. Because all really Josh's kind of creativity comes off of that blitz look. He needs to expand that a little bit. And he really d- hasn't done that. I would like to see more two-man looks on third down, two safety looks, two high safety looks on third downs going forward through this season. Because the front is so talented, they can win their one- one-on-one matchups and-, and get pressure on the quarterback. Um, and I would have liked to have seen that in this game. I just feel like we were overly... I mean, leaving Xavier Howard one-on-one with T. Higgins... Who the man just played an insane amount of snaps the week before? Something is get bad is going to happen. It just it is what it is, um, and you don't have to do that on third and long. Like if it was like a second and short or a first and short, maybe we want to be a little bit aggressive here, just kind of stop the bleeding. I get that, but not on third and long where we have them where we want them. So Josh has to be better as a defensive coordinator going forward. Um, and just giving offenses newer looks and varied looks, different looks completely, other than the single high safety stuff that he's been doing, um, and the blitzes, blitzes and stuff, because teams have shown they can pick it up, and they have stuff off of it that they can do to attack that look. So that has to change. It just has to change. I mean, the Bengals' game plan was literally get the ball out of, of Joe Burrow's hand as quick as you can and the Dolphins bailed them out on aggressive looks that the Bengals took advantage of instead of making Joe hold the ball a little bit longer and causing havoc up front and that's one thing I've noticed since Brian has left at least these first three weeks is when Brian was here, and this is something that hurt us early last year, but when he was here, we did have more varied coverages. Um, it wasn't just all the blitz look. And I feel like someone's got to get into Josh's ear and say, hey, let's look around the league. Let's look at what Buffalo does. Let's look at um, some other really um, successful zone defenses, what the Bears do with Eberflus. And let's kind of copy some of that and bring it over here, just to give just to give offenses different looks and to shake it up a little bit. Um, all I have to say, other than that, defensively, is they played a pretty good game, other than some of the bad defensive calls. The run defense, like I've said all year, is significantly better than it was a year ago. Elena Roberts continues to be one of the best run-stuffing middle linebackers in the National Football League. Um, the front dominated all night. It just sucks that we didn't help them on some of the back-end stuff. Uh, and clearly, you, you know, and you know, the crossing given up to Jamar Chase, that blitz call I'm not even mad at because we needed to play. You know, we just threw the stupid pick, and we needed to get off the field to make a play. So I'm not mad at that call at all. I understood why he did that. Um, but some of the other calls during the game were just, it's like, all right, we've, this, last week they picked it up how many times and they hit and they burned us for it. Let's just, let's do something different. Let's, let's let our front four try to win here. And, you know, there was a stat last week where when we rushed four or five, we actually got more pressure and more sacks when we did that against Buffalo last week. So, and the Bengals have a worse offensive line than the Buffalo Bills do. It's not even close. And it just is very unfortunate that we didn't come into that game with a better game plan to really accentuate that weakness of the Bengals. So that's really all I have to say on the defense side of the football. Um, we just put our corners in a lot of tough situations, and um, 
we need more varied looks. And I honestly believe, like, it, I would not be surprised if Josh is like, we just don't have any of that stuff in the playbook. And they didn't install it for on a short short week, but they have a bunch of time to do that preparing for the Jets game. So hopefully we can install some of that stuff because it's 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 honestly a lot of the same stuff. Um, we just need more stuff off of it. So let's move on to the offensive side of the football. It was a interesting night offensively. We did some good things in the run game. Um, some good things in the run game, I should say. Um, that's got to continue to get better. You know, Raheem Oster had 15 carries for 69 yards. He averaged just under 5 yards a carry, which isn't bad. Chase Edmonds really didn't get a lot of work running the football. Um, and shout out to Raheem Boster, who runs with a lot more power uh, than I initially thought, you know, watching him in San Francisco. He, he does run hard. Um, so that has to get better. Um, we can't, there, even against the Bills last week, we cannot be this bad in short yardage situations. And if it continues this way, then we have to pass on those downs. Like, I don't know what else to say. You know, this has been a problem for years, and they just have to, we have to continue to get better at that. Connor Williams has been a huge upgrade at center. Uh, you know, he made a nice key block on that big Raheem Moser run uh, late in the fourth quarter. So, there has been positives. Greg Little ha has played, I would say, good football. You know, he, he had his worst game against Cincinnati, but he's played pretty well for the most part. And, and Taron Armstead has been really nice as well. He, you know, he gave up that one bull rush, um, but he still didn't give up a sack. He let Teddy, you know, uh, you know, kind of break out of the pocket there. So, Armstead has been great despite him not practicing. Uh, he's been fantastic. So, there are definitely improvements on the offensive line. I feel like the pass protection all year has been a lot better, and even in this game, it was really good. Um, so it, that that's that's really good. It's a really good sign. Uh, I would say if Tua is going to miss this much time, I personally, and you guys know how I feel about this, I, I I'm more of a Skylar Thompson fan than I am a Teddy Bridgewater fan. Skylar has a bigger arm. He moves in the pocket better. I feel like he goes through his progressions quicker, and that's really, that's really weird to say because Teddy's been in the league for a long time. Um, but I feel like Teddy kind of just stares down one side of the field a lot, and he doesn't move in the pocket as well as he used to. Um, so, I don't know. That, that, that's going to come down to whatever Mike thinks. Obviously, Teddy has a lot of years on Skyler. He's probably a little bit more comfortable. That's one thing Teddy... His ball placement... And the speed of the game doesn't seem to be too much for him. Um, so that that's a good thing. But Teddy always has one or two or three plays a game where you go, why in the world? Like, the perfect example of that uh, is the interception at the end of the game. It was awful. Uh, I have no idea. He said he was supposed to be a hot read. Even if that's true, it would still have been a bad throw. <laughs> like, even let's just say that Mike sat in the zone. How, like, it was high and behind him. Like, Mike would not have gotten that anyway. So, it, it, it Teddy is just... I don't know. I just... I don't want to watch bad quarterback play for four or five games. If, if Skyler's better, just play Skyler. I know he's young. He's a rookie. Uh, but he looked great in preseason. He outplayed Teddy Bridgewater with the same players throughout the entire preseason. Uh, I would rather see Skyler Thompson. I, I'm, I'm a Skyler Thompson fan. I loved what I saw. First of all, Skyler... Like I said, has a bigger arm, and honestly, the scheme that we run I, is very beneficial to the quarterback. So, and it's very, um, it's very creative. It gets people open. Mike does a great job of designing the plays. You know, the, the offensive issues are not Mike's fault at all. The play calling is great. We just have to execute better. Just like the Teddy Bridgewater pick at the end of the game. It's like this was a fantastic drive. Um, and he just cannot make that throw there. So it is what it is. We have to be better on short yardage situations. I would have loved to have seen a sneak call on the on the third and inches. Uh, it is what it. We have to catch the touchdown in the back right corner of the end zone where Tua puts it right on on Edmonds. Like that's just you know stuff that we we have to be better in the red zone um, when we get down there. So it it hopefully the offensive line will continue to kind of come together here. Because uh, we need to be better in those areas, for sure. Uh, 
because we've had a lot of them. One thing Mike has done a great job of, especially with Tua, is getting him in third and short situations on a consistent basis. And that's something Tua hasn't had um, in past, obviously, regimes. And that's why his third down efficiency is better this year. Um, is because, and this is a hallmark of any offense, when you when we're constantly in third and fours, third and fives, third and threes, third and twos, obviously the percentages are going to go up, and that's just a lot harder, and you can do more creative things, and it's a lot harder to def- defend you um, as a defense. Not to mention the fact, shout out to Mike for really doing cool stuff on third and longs as well, third and ten, third and eight. He's had a lot of really cool um, uh, coverage beaters off of some of the stuff that we've seen against the Ravens and the Bills. So, Mike's done a great job. It's not Mike's fault. Um, it's just the players need to execute some of the stuff a little bit better. Um, but I thought the offense looked good overall. I mean, they just couldn't finish a drive. I mean, we had more total yards than the Bengals. We had 378 yards. The Bengals had 371. Uh, so, yeah, we had more rushing yards. Our yards per play was almost a yard better. We had 21st downs. They only had 16. So... We just have to be better at converting those third and shorts. We only punted three times. They punted four. It, you know, our pass protection was great all 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 game. So the offense was able to move the football. Uh, we just got to finish those drives. Uh, and I would like to uh, see Skylar Thompson uh, play quarterback uh, moving forward. If I, if it was my I, and I don't want to get in a situation where Teddy throws four interceptions, and then it's like, oh my god. Which I don't think Teddy ever would, especially in this offense. I mean, there are people constantly. I mean, it's just so hard to defend Jalen and Tyreek. And it sucks that they, you know, they're, they're banged up, especially Waddle. And he can't be on the field more. Um, but it, he, I still think Teddy obviously can have success in this offense because it is talented. And Mike is such a good play caller. But... Um, I would rather see Skyler. This next question comes from Jared. He says, Hey, Skags, do you feel like Tua's play style of never giving up? Let's get, we're going to get into the fan Q&A. This, again, this first question comes from Jared. Tua's play style of never giving up on a play is going to significantly shorten his football career. Uh, it could. I mean, it, I mean, honestly, it already has gotten him in a lot of trouble, even in college. He's had issues with that. And 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 in the NFL, he's 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 taken way too many big hits. So yes, that's something that they they just have to talk to him about. It's in his DNA. I mean, it's hard to just like like I said, he's never looking at the rush. He, his eyes are always downfield. He's just feeling it. So that, so it's hard to kind of tell him you can't do that anymore. So it's 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 difficult to do that. Um. Maybe you tell him, I don't know how you would tell him that. Like, if, if it's a four, maybe you tell him, here's a clock in your head. If it's this, if it hits this number, but it's it, it varies on every snap. So it's just so difficult to kind of tell a quarterback that they can't do it. Because it's, it's such a unique trait, and it's such a positive trait, but it can get you in trouble sometimes. This next question comes from SM. He says, time to develop a running game. Yeah, we have to be better on short yardage situations. And there's no doubt about it. We can't be this bad on... Uh, we can, we got to pick up a third in inches. This next, and we have to be better in the red zone. This next question comes from Ethan. He says, the most obvious question, Teddy or Skyler? Um, I'm more of a Skyler. Uh, I think Skyler should play. This next question comes from Richard. He says, think Dolphins' backup quarterback situation is better this season than last year. Do you think Dolphins spend a second-round pick on a quarterback in next year's draft with Tua's injury history if one falls? No, I think they have their future backup quarterback in Skyler. He's, he looked great, like phenomenal in preseason. He looked really good, and I would like to see him play um, if, uh, if, if Tua is going to be out for a significant ma- amount of time, which I'm sure he will be. Um, like I said, the perception of everybody else, I think, is going to affect the amount of time he's going to be gone. I hope he's not gone for the rest of the year. There's something that tells me that he might be, which hurt, it sucks, man, because he's playing the best football of his career. Um, he looked, There was a significant drop-off <laughs> from Teddy to Tua, or, t- yeah, from Tua to Teddy. Um, there were plays during the game when I was watching it 
It's like, oh man, we had Waddle on that in route. And, you know, the play where he scrambles and throws it to Sherfield, he had Waddle on like a 20 yard in route and he was wide open. Like, there's just stuff like that. Like, to, to his anticipation and his ability to get the ball out before people even come out of their breaks, his ability to process that fast. You know, and Tua has his limitations. Uh, I don't think the interception that he threw was all... I think, honestly, it was just a bad read. Um, rolling to your left and throwing back all the way across the field to your right on a post uh, with three people on Tyree Kill is just not a great... I, I just didn't, I think it was more the read. He should not have made that read. Um, but, honestly, I don't really care. If you throw a pick on a deep post or a goal ball, it doesn't really bother me that much. When you start throwing picks to the linebackers and little safeties that are looking underneath, that's when we have an issue. It means you can't read the field. So, you know, he tried to make the throw. He couldn't. It is what it is. But Tua really is playing the best football of his career. He really, really is. He's He looks great. So, it just sucks that he got hurt. And thank God he's okay because it, it looked really bad. So... Yeah, hopefully he's not out for the rest of the season. Um, that would suck. Uh, I I do think there's a chance that that could happen, though. And uh, if I was the Dolphins, I'd be like, all right, I know we paid Teddy whatever the heck we paid him and all this other stuff, but Skyler play, outplayed him in preseason. Why would we not go to Sky? I, I don't know. We'll see what happens. I, I, I want to, you know, this team is still really good. I think defensively we can be a, uh, even better if we tweak a couple of things with a, with some, you know, just show a little bit more variety. Um, you know, play more two high looks. We don't have to have Javon Holland on, on an island back there all the time uh, and everybody on an island all the time. Uh, and it sucks we didn't take advantage of the, the mismatch up front because I, I, I definitely think we, we should have. I think, honestly, and I'm not just saying this to say this, we, we looked like the better football team and we should have won that game. Um, but obviously there was a lot of unfortunate things that happened in the game uh, that we can't... I mean, it's, it's what it is. Injuries are a part of the game. So that is it, ladies and gentlemen. I uh, well, I guess it'll be a while before I do another one because we have, we have a, f- some, a few extra days. But um, it is what it is. It's going to be interesting to see what they do with the quarterback situation. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one.